everybody. It's time once again for corrections. And I think all in all, we had a we had a pretty good week. Um, some cleanup from uh, last week. We did a piece on Thursday of last week where we talked about Donald Trump once said that the American army during the Revolutionary War uh, took over the airports. And then we said uh, that general, the British general Cornwallis when he tried to escape LaGuardia, asked where is ground transportation? And people pointed out that if you were British, you would say, where is ground transport? <laughs> now that's true, but here's the problem. If we had said that, someone invariably, one of the jackals would have said, at LaGuardia, it's not called ground transport, it's called ground transportation. This is what we call a corrections pickle. <laughs> There's no path forward that ends in salvation. <laughs> like, they're both bad choices for me. There's no way out for me. There is one good choice, but it is for you to make, which is just to stop. <laughs> we talked about um, Kellyanne Conway crashing an F-16 and landing in a parachute on the tarmac. In the graphic we made, she was uh, dressed like a skydiver. A lot of people pointed out if she was in an F-16 piloting it, she'd be wearing a flight suit and a parachute. She wouldn't have prepared for the parachuting. And we would, so we'd like to apologize to her because we know how important veracity <laughs> is in her life. We asked, this was sort of a thing we crowdsourced out to our, our, our friends in Oregon because we've been talking a lot about how many movies they shoot in uh, Astoria. Oregon, a lot, of, a lot of hit films. The Goonies, Kindergarten Cop, The Ring 2, which I referred to as Ring 2, which was wrong. A lot of people said it's not Ring 2, it's The Ring 2. However, if you go to a blockbuster and ask for Ring 2 and they say, we don't even know what that is, <laughs> that's on them, you know? They should be helpful at a Blockbuster. And the last Blockbuster closed in 2019. So yeah, that does work. <laughs> you could have gone to a Blockbuster trying to rent the Ring 2. So, but they do have, a, it turns out there is film tourism in Astoria. They have a film museum that is in the jail from Goonies, which is great. So if you're looking for fun for the whole family and, you know, Disney World falls into the sea. <laughs> Head on down to the jail from Goonies. <laughs> We've talked a lot about how you can't do sloth anymore. And I talked about how it's been really hard for comedians who have, like, huge sloth chunks in their act. People said, I see what you did there. Sloth chunks, because the other character is chunk. That was an accident. <laughs> I had no idea I was doing that. Which is, I think, proof, dare I say, of just how good this is. <laughs> that we're like on accident doing jokes that good. <laughs> um, a lot of people told me how to say don't do sloth in Latin, but it was again Corrections pickle, there were about eight choices. The one thing that was clear is I should not have tried to look up the Latin word for sloth because sloth is a character. So I shouldn't, it should have just be like, noli sloth facias, noli sloth simulare. And I guess there's a lot of Latin versions of don't do sloth because I guess this was a problem in the Catholic church. A lot of priests were doing, <laughs> they were doing sloth. like. They were doing their sloth impressions, and it was, you know, obviously fairly offensive to... What do you call people? It's not parishioners. What do you call people who go to Catholic Church? Parishioners. Yeah. Parishioners. Oh, that's right. It's very offensive, and so they would say to the, you know, they would say to the Catholic <laughs> priests, like, you know, no least sloth vath, yeah. <laughs> and then they'd move them, but it wouldn't stop them. They'd still do sloth. <laughs> they'd still do sloth. They'd say they stopped. <laughs> so, I talked about, we talked about can one person 
line up. And someone said, you can't, one person can't line up. You can join a line, you can get in line. Uh, and then I said, it's like that uh, John Donne poem, uh, No Man is a Line. People said, you mean John Donne. You say John Donne. John Donne wrote, No Man is an Island. John Donne wrote, No Man is a Line. John Donne was a John Donne parody poet. Weird John. It's the first parody poet. Um, I did, I smoked as a horse. The other day, I pantomimed smoking as a horse. We've talked a lot about smoking cockroaches, and the corrections jackals were very helpful here and said, you know, a cockroach wouldn't smoke from its mouth. It would, it would smoke from its spiracles, I think it was, which is it, because its lungs are on its side. So I thought I was safe with a horse because I was like, you know, horses have mouths. Turns out a couple things. One, People pointed out, and I should have known better, horses with their hooves could not hold a, cig a cigarette. <laughs> it would have to be two. So right away, this would be, if you're correctly pantomiming, if you're taking it seriously enough to get it right, it would be this. And then also horses, according to, again, this is just one solitary jackal, a lone jackal, and this is the risk of corrections, which is a lone jackal tells me something, and I do no follow-up. But they told me that do that horses have long, soft palates that blocks their, I hope I'm saying this right, epiglottis, and that a horse would smoke through their nose. They breathe through their nose. So from now on, if we pantomime horses smoking on the show, it would have to be. <laughs> and so that means we're just not gonna, we're not gonna do it again. Because that's pretty distressing to watch. A pig, though, I think, and I'd like to reach out to, again, we have, we've, we've established a lot of those in the farming community, uh, farm enthusiasts watch the show. I think because of a cloven hoof, a pig could hold a cigarette, and we'll find out how they smoke. But I would love, I think we'll do a lot more pig smoking on the show if this is... <sighs> Oink. Um, did a Larry David yesterday that I think in retrospect was pretty... Pretty bad. <laughs> Not gonna do it again. And just gonna get ahead of it. Same thing with tonight's Brokaw, which you're, you're seeing this on Friday, but on Thursday night. Did a, a thought I had a Brokaw, got away from me. So I, before you even say it, I hear you. Saying a couple lyrics from Randy Newman's classic, I love LA. I said, I love LA, I love it. Shame on me. It's I love LA, we love it. And that is a very important song uh, for me. And this is, a, this is a very true story. I uh, moved to Los Angeles in uh, 1999. My brother and I moved there and our car, we went to Rent-A-Wreck where we rented a Ford Festiva for I think like $400 the whole month, which is a pretty good deal. A Ford Festiva is a very, it's like a box. There's not much to a Ford Festiva. No, no one at a car dealership has ever said, if you want a little bit more, <laughs> I'd love to show you the Ford Festiva. It had Festiva written, that's how I remember it. Had four, uh, Festiva was written in cursive on the side. It was popular in an era where people wanted to see the name of their car on the side of it. And we had a Ford Festiva. And I remember when we got it, the guy said, the only thing uh, you don't need to know, uh, you should know, is that the windshield wipers don't work. And, you know, coming from the East Coast, my brother and I said, that seems like a huge problem. And he said, it never rains in L.A. And uh, we were like, okay, cool. So we take the Ford Festiva, and we, uh, I remember we stopped at a Tower Records, and uh, we bought Randy Newman's Greatest Hits on cassette tape, because we thought it would be super funny to drive around in a Ford Festiva our first week in L.A., blasting I Love L.A. in the worst car that money could buy. <laughs> and, like, our first night there, it poured rain. And because we didn't have windshield wipers, we had to pull over on the side of the road and just wait for the rain to stop. And there was nothing more depressing than being like new young actors in LA sitting on the side of the road while you're hearing like Randy Noman be like, from the west side <laughs> to the east side. <laughs> um, we talked about uh, the snap, the Thanos snap. And we showed Wally a wonderful work by our graphics department. I know I give the graphics department a bit of trouble here. A uh, wonderful job by them of showing Wally uh, disintegrating. 
Uh, but then people said, you know, the problem with that uh, graphic, which was great, is that Wally's cue card would not have disintegrated. Wally would have disintegrated and the cue card would have dropped to the ground, which is true if the cue card wasn't a part of Wally. <laughs> Wally's cue cards are to him what our arms and legs are. It's been a part of him since he was born. When, when Wally was born, when Wally was born, the doctor said, it's a boy. Not because he saw anything on Wally. He, and thank you for lending this to me, Wally, because I guess your mom saved it. He said, it's a boy, because Wally was holding this. <laughs> it's tiny. <laughs> Heard from the uh, knitting community again. <laughs> Same lovely woman. As she, on Instagram, she like, you know, we're living in an era right now where I think everyone's like worried they did something 15 years ago that's gonna come back to haunt them. And uh, I did a photo shoot years ago and she just posted this photo and I'm paraphrasing, she was like, the Because <laughs> I guess if we could go tight on the hands, I guess that's like, there's nothing about that which is proper knitting technique. And I'm so mad. Because I remember doing that shoot and they're like, maybe you could be knitting a blanket. I'm like, guys, I don't know how it works. <laughs> and they're like, just do it. What's going to happen? And I'm like, I would just hate to offend those who, you know, honor this craft. And they're like, don't worry about the knitters. What are they going to do, hunt you down? Well, they did. <laughs> they did. And as we've established, they are foul-mouthed, humorless, <laughs> My Twitter feed is a cesspool because of this, at the time, fun photo to take. What else we got? Um, okay. GoldenEye, I talked about the GoldenEye uh, cheat codes and I guess a lot of people said uh, I left out an L. I left out a solitary L. Um, more than made up for by all the Ls who pointed that out. Had some L trouble in general this week. Um, we had a joke about Doritos, uh, cauliflower Doritos. Um, can we throw it up real quick, Alex? Um, you might be noticing ca cauliflower. Ca cauliflower. You know how the kids say it. Doritos was like, we'll do it a cool way. Ca cauliflower. Brawly. <laughs> Me and my friends are going out for some brawly. How we fly. <laughs> Not the worst thing graphics did to me this week. <laughs> All right, so I busted pretty hard on, on the graphics department yesterday because we were talking about LAX, and I was talking about one time I looked over in traffic, uh, it was so bad at LAX that the car next to me uh, had a skeleton driving it. And um, the car was not what I expected it to be. It was like an old Volvo station wagon, basically. And I gave it a lot of, can we show it real quick? Okay, so that's, all right, take it down, because I want to say something. I went after graphics hard, okay? And then I walk off stage, and Sal, who writes a closer look, and is, a, is an honorable man, said, this is on me. They said, what kind of car? And I said, like an old Volvo. Now, obviously, Sal is no longer with the show. <laughs> But I felt bad, and I was gonna go, um, you know, down, um, down to where graphics are. Um, you know, we're right now, uh, we're on the eighth floor. Graphics is what, negative 50? <laughs> you have to take three elevators down. Um, they're, they're like very deep in a part of the building that you, you kind of can't believe exists. And I was gonna go down there and apologize to them because I felt so bad. But then, you know, I read uh, some of the comments and people uh, said, hey, the car is not the problem. The problem is you described a car stuck in traffic at LAX and they gave you a car that was speeding ahead <laughs> on open road. Let's take another look. <laughs> it's blurry. The background is blurry. That skeleton is driving so fast. So you know what? 
You're going the way of Sal, everybody. <laughs> um, lastly, uh, we, uh, we did, we were, uh, you know, uh, I'm very happy to announce uh, we finished second for the Emmy, tied for second. <laughs> very nice for the Emmy, the Academy to reach out and say, tied for second, four way tie, <laughs> which is great. In a second, we lost to um, Carpool Karaoke, which as I've said before, is the, maybe one of the greatest uh, talk show bits of all time. And a very deserving uh, winner of the Emmy. I, like, it's so good that I feel like, I almost wanna like change the name of this to like sound more like it, if there was anything that made sense at all. But I don't think there is. And I also think that at the end, it's not about winning or losing, it's about the jackals you tried to avoid meeting along the way. But I didn't avoid it, I met you all. And uh, if I had won, it was going to be mine and mine alone, but I do feel like we lost together. <laughs> also people said, hey, do you feel bad that you like really pushed it, you had a lot of like for your consideration stuff, a lot of like FYC stuff. That, I want to clarify, this was, a lot of people said this was an FYC. This is a fine young cannibals mug, okay? <laughs> this has nothing to do with an award push. Um, so again, uh, congratulations to everybody at Carpool Karaoke <laughs> and <laughs> congratulations to the other nominees. And it's been uh, lovely uh, having you see me and I look forward to you seeing me uh, again next week. And in all sincerity, um, this is, uh, uh, all jokes aside, this is my favorite part of the week. Uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you, uh, well, you, well, I don't know, however you want me to say it. You guys record yourself saying it and play it at the end so that it's satisfying to your ears. Each one of you different because you know what? Jackals are like snowflakes, you're all different. <laughs> and you're also like the modern use of snowflakes, uh, which is you're irritated by everything. <laughs>